All right, today we're gonna to be talking about this commercial I made with my mentor, Pete Sepinuk and Cryptozoic Entertainment. Get ready for a fistful of fun! With epic Star Wars Magic Fight, this extreme PvP card battler has over four million one-of-a-kind spell combos. Earn digital collectibles and try not to die! It's complete mayhem! your enemies to become the ultimate hero! It's full-blown carnage with epic Star Wars Magic Fight! Coming soon! This commercial is a spot that I did with some of my very, very old friends and colleagues, and I'm really excited to be talking about it because it is my first motion capture project that I've done. And I wanna take you through some of the process and behind the scenes of that project. Now, like I said, this was my first motion capture project that was a paid gig, so to speak. I've done some motion capture in the past, but this was the first one where I was like, you know what, let's just flex our muscles here and uh, give this the true college try. And I really learned a lot. We only had about seven days to turn it around, so I think it turned out pretty well given our time constraints. The first thing that we had to make sure is that we had character models. When it comes to doing motion capture, obviously you need characters. Now fortunately, the client came to me with 3D characters and they were already built in a T-pose. They also have to be textured too, so fortunately they also came textured, so all the colors were there. I didn't have to worry about that at all. Now we needed an idea. Pete Sepinuk, who is one of my old friends and mentors, he came to me with something called an animatic. An animatic is basically a sort of timed out version of what the spot should be in a concept phase. So this doesn't look pretty. It looks like this actually. Get ready for a fistful of fun. Ah! With epic Spell Wars Magic Fight. An animatic is taking images, maybe sketches, or storyboards, or viewport animation stuff, and putting it all on a timeline timed out to the music and voiceover so that the artists, like me, have a general foundation of where to start with the process of the project. Coming soon! <laughs> So fortunately, when this project started, we had a general concept so we could dive into doing all of the fun stuff. So with the characters and then the animatic, we had to move on to the next phase and that is rigging. Rigging is a huge part of 3D character animation and that is something that we really needed to consider with this short turnaround. Rigging is something where you can say, hey, bend the arm and the arm would bend on the character. Now, creating custom rigs takes time. It is very complicated and time consuming because think about all the bones in your hands and getting those to work and making sure they don't bend the wrong way. Rigging is hard. Now, fortunately, rigging can also be easy. Aren't you contradicting yourself, Jags? I mean, a little bit, but hear me out. The human shape and the human figure, two arms, two legs, and a head is pretty universal. So because of that, a lot of developers and software engineers and people way smarter than me have figured out a way to do some templated rigging, so to speak. One of those services includes Mixamo. If you go to Mixamo.com, you can see pre-built, pre-made character animations that you can use in VFX and games and all that fun stuff. Now, one of the super duper cool parts about Mixamo is they also have an auto rigger on their service site. So you can take your character and rig it straight there and you can get a Mixamo rig that is built for their 3D character animations. Now, there are some hiccups that happen with that. Not all characters are built the same. You have different characters of different proportions, different limb lengths. For this spot in particular, the Spidera character had very, very long arms and fingers. So it was a really interesting way to get the character rigs to work well with Mixamo, but we figured it out. The first thing that we had to do was we had to make sure that we rigged Spidera without her cloak. The cloak was actually causing a lot of problems because the Mixamo rig thought that the cloak was part of her legs. 
So what we did is we deleted the cloak and then rigged her without that by filling in her torso with a cube. And then using that new animation, we deleted the cube and then reattached the cloak and rebuilt it off of the rig that Mixamo spit out. So it ended up working out pretty well. However, there's one downside about using Mixamo. You don't get facial rigs. Obviously getting a facial rig would have made the character seem a little bit more lively, but that's a whole separate process of getting bones for the mouth and the eyes and nose and all of that stuff. Obviously this character is stylized, so you could maybe take some creative liberties, but we only had about seven days to turn this commercial around. And fortunately in the animatic, none of the shots were so close on the face that we wanted to see some of their facial details. Really, we were focusing on three actions. The fireball, the oh no, head is about to explode animation with Bomb Bob, and then the dancing of Spidera. So with those three animations, we had to start animating. Animation was actually really simple because we were doing motion capture. We used my Rococo version two suit and it was a super fun process. Fortunately in 2022, we have things like Discord where I was actually able to jump on the call with the producer, Pete, and he could direct me from his home. I like wind up like, yeah, yeah, I got like, we do a quick wind up around your head, go like a circle and then throw it around your head. So the green means you're recording? Yes. Okay, got it. So yeah, just like that. Yeah, yeah, getting into it, getting into it. Yep, you got it. You can hear it. Great. And he had a ton of fun being able to sit in his chair at home and just be like, Jags, do the thing. And I was able to just dance around in my bedroom. This is awesome. Thanks, Jags. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, let me know if you, if you, whenever, you, whenever you have anything put together. I'm still waiting on assets, obviously, but hopefully get yeah. those before the end of the day and I'll get everything to you. Great. Thanks, Pete. Man. Okay, see you, Bye. Bye. Once we finished the motion capture process in Rococo Studio, I really like the fact that Rococo Studio comes with some base filters in their software so we can clean up some of the little hiccups that might happen. That includes knee popping or drifting or maybe the foot going through the floor. Fortunately, all that stuff we were able to clean up in Rococo Studio and then bring that out as an FBX. And with that FBX, we can bring it into some 3D software and start doing the character animation. So with that FBX, I brought it into Cinema 4D. You could use Blender or Maya, I just prefer Cinema 4D. And we have to work with two things. First, we have to work with our target. Our target being the 3D character that we're working with. In my case, it was the characters Spidera and Bomb Bob. And then we have to work with our source, which is the motion capture animation. And the goal is to marry those two together. Now in Cinema 4D, the way that works is on the character, you make a character definition tag, make sure that you have the rig there, obviously. And with that rig, you can be like extract skeleton. And then basically you have the 3D skeleton of the 3D character. Then you go to your source, which is your motion capture data, and you do the same thing. And you extract your skeleton, and then you create something called a solver. And it basically says, hey, motion capture data, apply yourself to the target character. And with that, we get the character animated. How cool is that? It's super simple to just get our 3D character animation mocap data and put it on our character. So from there, we could export the data from Cinema 4D and bring it into Unreal. Once the character is in Unreal, we can drop it in a sequencer, a sequencer being where we can do animation. And fortunately, the way Unreal reads that data is it just comes in as a single object and we can load up the animation and begin playing it back in real time. After that, we drop it into the level and the scene and we can start doing our camera cuts. Now those camera cuts could be way more complex, but we were trying to follow the animatic, so the final animation ended up looking like this. Obviously we added a ton more to this. We included some fireballs and some atmospheric fog, some lighting to the scene, some grass, some trees, etc. There's a lot of steps that we're overlooking in this project because I really just wanted to focus on the motion capture today, but I hope you learn something about the process of this. When it comes to doing motion capture, the first thing is you need some sort of character to animate and some sort of concept to work with. Fortunately, we had the characters and then our client had a general idea of what the sequence of the shot should be. Because of that, I, as the artist, could come in and execute on said idea. 
And obviously the idea is important, but so is the process of actually creating the work as well. So I'm really happy with how it turned out because we could use tools like Cinema 4D and Unreal Engine and After Effects to bring this all together and create something really cool. Now, when it comes to the rest of the commercial, we did a lot of it in After Effects and we did a good chunk of the card animation in Unreal Engine because let's be real, it's super cool and real time. And you can get a lot of really cool assets in there for very, very low effort, such as the fireballs and the explosions and the dust and whatnot. We did have to create the cards from scratch, but that's a story for another time. I really hope you enjoyed this video, this little behind the scenes on the motion capture of the Epic Spell Wars Magic Fight commercial. If you learned something, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to join the party and learn more about Unreal Engine stuff or motion graphics things with me, hit that subscribe button. It lets me know that I'm making more people who want to learn all of this stuff. If you could do me a favor and cast a magical spell at that like button and blow it up, destroy it, it really helps the video out, helps the algorithm understand that this content is valuable to the world. And I will leave you with one final tip and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some gains. Goodbye my friends. Bye.